This is the Ashcroft Indian Band cooking show. cheddar meatloaf with some mac and cheese and Jodine is going to make some raspberry mousse. Delicious. <laughs> so for the little mini meatloafs, we're going to start with our hamburger. Thank you. <laughs> and we're going to put in three quarters of a cup of milk. Thank you. We are going to put in about a cup of cheddar cheese. And this is all to your taste, whatever you like, however you like it, you'll be able to adjust it. For your family. Alright, and then we're going to put in half a cup of oats, and we're going to put in about a half a cup of onion. Wash your hands too. <laughs> you can do that, you don't get measuring cups. Alright, and then we're going to have a little bit of salt and pepper. Another thing that I do like to do is um, sometimes I'll put in some steak spice, sometimes one of my favorite is the um, crushed peppers and uh, garlic spice, which is really good. It just depends on what your family likes and how spicy they like things. Alright, so um, we're also going to crack in an egg. Well done. Alright, and then we get to mush it all up. Get it to a nice, so that everything is combined. My kids would like that actually. Yeah. Yeah, get your kids to help. Make sure they wash their hands first. <laughs> and so um, you can either put, make the mini meatloaves up in one casserole dish together, or you can do it individually. You can also, if you have a large family, you can increase the recipe, or you can cut it in half if you're, you know, there's just one or two of you. And it's quick and easy this way too, because we make the meatloaves so small that um, it doesn't take that long, and you can make sure that it's all nice and cooked all the way through. So just about like that, hand size, so we can fit one in that little individual one so you can see how that works for you. Like I said, if you want to cut it in half and just make a couple. Or we just line them up inside a big baking dish. So we have um, a sauce that we put on, it's basically ketchup and mustard and brown sugar. And that goes on probably about three quarters of the way through the cooking process. And it is delicious. It doesn't sound like much, but it just sets the whole thing off perfectly. All right, so there we go. So we made eight. So we have seven in there and a single. Thank you. So at this point, I will cover it with some tin foil, and it goes in the oven at 350, and we'll put it in for about 25 minutes. We'll pull it out. We will um, drain any excess excess fats and, and juices in there and then put the sauce on and then put it back in for probably another 20 minutes or so. All right, so now I'm going to put this in and then we're gonna start on the mac and cheese. So now we're going to make some mac and cheese. Um, I like to make mine with a roux with the cheese sauce and I like to add some canned tomato. So again, um, it's whatever you like. Start out with some butter in a frying pan. I might want to turn that down a little bit. <laughs> okay. So we'll get some of that in there. So a roux is butter and flour. So a roux is, yes, <laughs> butter and flour. I actually also add some onions in mine because wow. I like onions. So you want to make sure that the onions are translucent and soft because you don't want hard crunchy onions in your mac and cheese. So I get that going. Lots of butter, so if you're going to eat this comfort food, you might also want to join the community fitness challenge. <laughs> Add some flour. I would say start with a tablespoon, and if you need more, then you can add some more. You want to cook the flour so that it's 
a light brownish color. So after this cooks for a little bit and we get it, the onions nice and soft and a little bit of a brown color to the, the mixture here, we're gonna add our milk. And then once we add the milk, then we're gonna add in the cheese. And again, it's a personal preference of how much cheese you like. I'm a little cheesy, so I like a little extra cheese. All right, so we're gonna add some milk now. I'm gonna just turn this down a little bit more. Okay. And again, it's how much, how thick you like your sauce or how thin you like it. So as you're pouring in the milk, it will thicken. And also remember too, as you add the cheese in, it'll thicken a little more as well. And just keep stirring it. You don't want it to spoil or have any lumps or anything like that. I might need a little bit more. I'm going to add some cheese. You don't want to use all your cheese in here. I would say maybe, maybe a cup. So you don't want to fill it too much. Maybe, maybe three quarters full because we want to be able to mix this around. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Because you can always add to it as well. Okay, so it's almost done. So at this point, I'm going to add some of the tomatoes. A little bit of juice. And again, preference. If you don't like tomatoes, you don't have to add it. Um, I do. It, it adds a little extra flavor to it. That I like. Mix it in there quite nicely. Alright. Okay, and then we just mix it around in here a little bit. And we'll see that there is a lot of sauce, which is perfect. That's what you want. And then we're going to add the cheese top. And again, as much as you want, however you like it. There's nothing better when you put it in for the last couple of minutes on a broil and it gets all bubbly and crunchy. My favorite part. The best part, for some, is you top it with either some breadcrumbs you can do them yourself, you can buy them in the store. What I like to do is get some croutons, and these ones are cheese and garlic. And I put them in a bag, and then I smash them. Really well. And then pour those on top. Get the crumble in here. <laughs> Do you like some more on there? It's okay. I think you... Uh, you sure? I think you did a good job. All right. Perfect. So then what I'll do is this only needs to cook for maybe 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. So once the um, the pat or the meatloaf is ready to come out to put the sauce on, then I put them both back in together for about 25 minutes and then they're both ready to go. So now we're going to make the sauce for the mini meatloaf. So usually anywhere between a quarter of a cup of brown sugar to a half, depending on how sweet you like yours. Um, I like about a quarter. And um, depending again to how sweet you like yours, I would go with maybe three quarters of a cup of ketchup to that ratio. Um, and then probably a couple tablespoons of um, mustard. And you just give it a good mix. And of course, the best way to tell is taste it as you're going. All right, so then that's it. Okay, so now the meatloaves have cooked for about 25 minutes. And I've taken them out, poured off the excess grease, uh, juices, and now we're gonna put the, the sauce over top. Stick this back in the oven at 350 along with the macaroni and cheese. In there. Got the cheese is going in there. And the 
be good for about a half an hour. Okay, so now it's the mousse time. This is a raspberry mousse. Um, the original recipe has lady fingers in it. I don't like lady fingers, so I omit them. And you can add them if you want. I'll add them into the original recipe, but it's up to you. So we're gonna just start with a bag of frozen raspberries. Thank you. <laughs> and some sugar. And you just want it uh, like a jam consistency. So you just kind of mush it and, until the juices of the raspberries come out and it's kind of bubbly. So well, that'll just take a few seconds here. Really juicy. So as I'm cooking it, I'm kind of squishing down the raspberries to get as much juice in. So we're just gonna strain it. Now you're just gonna push it through so you get all the juice on the bottom. So all that yummy juice goes back into the pan. Okay, some lemon juice and some jelly beans. Then you wanna put it back onto the heat. And you have to keep stirring it the whole time? Well, the thing is you want it to dissolve, okay. but you do not want this to boil. Oh, okay. So you're just uh, cooking it until it dissolves. So um, the next step is the uh, whipping cream. If you don't have a KitchenAid mixer, just use a hand mixer. It does the same thing, it's no biggie. Um, I should measure this. <laughs> I just kind of eyeball it Oops. and wear it. <laughs> it's better to wear it. Looks like you're committed. For later. Um, that's about just over half. Because you want lots for the topping just plain whipped cream, and then you're gonna add this to the syrup, the raspberry juice syrup that you just made, so. Here we go. And I'm gonna add whipping cream as it gets a little thicker. I'm gonna add, I'm sorry, uh, icing sugar. You don't wanna over whip this because you'll have butter. <laughs> we don't want butter. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of icing sugar to this. Okay, before I add the, uh, the raspberry syrup to this, I'm gonna take a little bit out and just um, <laughs> hey, um, put some, just for the very top, for fancy schmancy. Um, if you don't have a piping bag, it doesn't matter. I use these a lot too, just like a scoop to scoop it too. You don't have to be this fancy. So I'm just gonna slowly add this and you're gonna fold it in. So add a little bit at a time. I love, this is my favorite part. So now just adding it and folding it in. You want to keep the air bubbles in the whipped cream. This stuff's like the bomb, so I like lots of the syrup. And then more raspberries. And then the final fancy schmancy thing is dark chocolate. And I just shave a little bit on top. Hope you guys enjoyed cooking with Jody and Di. Um, we will have the, the ingredients and the recipe and the instructions available to anybody who wants them. And uh, we would love to see your version. Mm -hmm. Post it on our Facebook page, take pictures and post it on yours. Yeah, I wanna see what you guys take with the recipe and what you do with it, so mm -hmm. yeah. And if you like this, there's more to come. We'll be back. <laughs> have a good day, guys. Bye.